So Tucker Carlson had Stormy Daniels' lawyer on his show. This guy is uh, Michael Avenatti. He's nothing but a mainstream media creation. They've put him on TV, and he's a uh, sufficient anti-Trump grifter. So he's made quite a name for himself by um, basically forcing himself into the spotlight. So Tucker Carlson and Avenatti, um, I guess you could say, debated on Tucker's show, but the conversation basically became an incoherent scream fest. Let's watch and then we'll talk about it. He joins us now. Thanks a lot for coming on. So, I mean, we could sit and hurl insults at each other for the segment. Already done that. I've certainly insulted you. You've insulted me. But you seem smart. So let me take you seriously as someone who wants to be involved in the public conversation and ask you about things that you have said on questions of policy to flesh them out a little bit. So this is you at a rally in July. I think it was the day after the president spoke with Vladimir Putin in Helsinki. And you were addressing a rally. And here's what you said. Watch. What Vladimir Putin and Russia did to this country in connection with the 2016 election is no different than if they would had placed 100,000 troops on our border. Yeah. 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 This was an invasion. It was an electronic invasion. It used hackers and tweeters to elect this president. So if Russia had 100,000 troops on our border, I mean, that would be an act of war, a profound provocation. What would be the rational response to that if you really felt the threat was that profound? If you were president, how would you respond to that? Well, Tucker, I understood that I was coming on your show tonight to talk about the case uh, involving my client. Well, I, I, didn't, I didn't tell you that, and I'm wait, happy wait, to talk about wait, the case, wait, wait, I, wait, but wait, I just Tucker, played Tucker, you a clip. I don't, Tucker, I, I Tucker, you, you got to stop, question. Tucker, you got to stop interrupting me, okay? Because one of the conditions of me coming on tonight was that you were not going to do what you do routinely to guests, which is talk over them and interrupt them. So just let me finish with my answer, okay? Let me okay. finish with my I answer. I said I'd give you a fair interview. I just, I actually don't have an interest in squabbling with you at all or name calling. I've done a lot of that. To you and you've right, done but not it to, to me. No, but not to my face. I, I could, but what's the point? I want to take you seriously. I'm serious. Okay. So I just played a clip of what you said at a rally. You're traveling to states because you want to influence policy direction. Correct. I don't think it's unfair to ask you about something that you said. What's the question? And the question, let me restate it, is you said that Russia has done something that is equivalent to putting 100,000 troops on our border. That's an act of war. Correct. And I wonder two things. One, what you would do as president if that happened under your watch. And two, what do you think Russia thinks watching public figures like you say that we're at war with Russia? What effect do you think that has? Well, first of all, there's no question that Russia interfered with the 2016 election in a very serious way. The only question is, what was the involvement in Donald Trump or by Donald Trump and his cronies in the process? Okay. And that's what Bob Mueller's in the process of getting to the bottom of. By but how of should the grand, we as a country respond? There you go, interrupting me again. Okay. So how, how should we respond? Yes, we I asked you three times. We should respond with the absolute force of the law. We should be doing everything in our power to bring those individuals to justice, those individuals that are also in Russia, and let me tell you what we should not be doing. We should not be standing shoulder to shoulder with Vladimir Putin and choosing Russia over the hardworking men and women of the intelligence community that risk their lives for this country. So the, the president the has sold out the United okay, States so the for the benefit of Putin. The administration announced today a new round of even tougher sanctions against Russia. Do you support that? I, I think it's a start, but I don't think it's what a step. What would be the end? I don't think it's a step in the right direction. I, I don't think the president has shown any leadership relating Sanctions to Sanctions are not a step in the Vladimir. right direction? No, I said it's a step, but okay. it's not enough. Okay. I believe that President Trump should demand the extradition of each and every individual in Russia that Bob Mueller and others believe were responsible for the election okay. meddling in 2016. Okay, so I think a number of people I think have been, have I think been that's charged. A start. Okay, that's a I start. think that's a but start. What's the, I mean, if you really believe that it's the same as 100,000, what I'm saying is you're using reckless rhetoric on a subject you don't really understand that increases the temperature between the United States and nuclear armed adversary. Is that a responsible thing to do? I, I think under the circumstances, I stand by my words, and I think for you to let... But it's 100,000 troops on I the think border? For you, I think for you to lecture me about reckless rhetoric is rather ironic, Tucker, in light of some of the reckless rhetoric that okay. you engage in okay. each and every day on this Reckless show. rhetoric, okay. You, let me ask you a question. No, I don't think... Why you, is it, you, why don't you is get it, a no, TV show and then you no, can ask no, me a question? Why is it I've that, asked you a no, simple question why is it that and you're you not call, answering Why is it that you question? don't call Donald Trump the creepy porn president? He's the one that had oh. sex with a four-month-old son at home okay, so with my 
my client so now, without okay. a condom. Okay, so but, but you don't want to acknowledge the, okay, that. Hold on. You don't want to acknowledge, yeah, acknowledge it. that. Acknowledge it. Okay. Do you believe that he had sex yes, with my I client? Do. I've said that on okay, the air so multiple he's lied times. So let me ask you a American question. People, and you're what okay is, with that. What you is think the, it's okay if the president lies to the American settle people? Settle down. Let me finish my question to you. Okay. Did Donald Trump have a moral obligation to tell the, the American people that he had a sexual relationship with Stormy Daniels? I don't care whether he had a moral obligation or not. Then why is it obligation? No, what he had an obligation to do was not cover it up, cover it up and lie about it and commit campaign finance okay. violations as his right hand. Campaign. Michael Cohen just pled guilty to the felony. Tucker, what are you to talking about? To campaign finance violations? Yes, associated with, with right. Ms. McDougal. And I thought you were following the so, news. So let me I thought ask you were you, knowledgeable let me, let me about ask these you. things. I'm a little confused. So you're, the, you were you're the protector of Stormy Daniels. Stormy Daniels is right now working in strip clubs and little towns on stage. People are throwing things at her. You're wearing a $1,000 suit. Why is you, why are you not paying her? You've profited from Stormy Daniels. You've done tens of millions of dollars with the free media on the basis of your relationship with her, and she's working in strip clubs. Tucker, now you're the defender of my client. You don't know well, anything it's about pathetic. my client. You're exploiting you don't even her. Know, you don't know anything about my client. Exploiting I my know client. that she's working her. in a strip club you gotta in let me finish. Can I finish? Please do. All right. I've done a remarkable job for my client, and she'll be the first one to tell you that. And had you listened to any of her interviews or yes. seen any of her comments, you would know exactly what she thinks of me. I am not, I'm not done. I am not exploiting my client. I'm really? representing my client to the absolute. So when she the wants to get yeah, your I'm legal still, advice, still does she have to pretend to be talking. a booker from CNN still, to get through to you? You know, I mean, that's, that's, that's disgusting. Why don't you show some What's disgusting some respect? is Why don't you, you show are thriving some respect to my client not. and me and stop calling us a porn star and a creepy porn lawyer. If you've got that big a well, problem with porn, thought, do you have that wait, big wait, a problem I'm with porn? I'm not making fun of when's the last time, slow when's down. The last, when's the last time you saw porn? Oh, you busted me. Actually, I made a humiliation time? porn. No, That's but, why I watch you on CNN. No, no but when's the last time you viewed porn? You're a little creepier even than I realized. Do you have a problem, with, you have a problem with porn? You're What's dodging your the porn? question. What the fuck? This is what happened to the political discourse in America. <laughs> this is how much it's degraded. I mean, it was never good, but this is like next level shitty. At the end there, Avenatti asked Tucker, when was the last time you looked at porn? Bro, what does that have to do with anything? <laughs> what does that have to do with it? He's saying like, oh... You call her a porn star and me a creepy porn lawyer to try to be smug and put us down, but you watch porn, so maybe you're not really putting us down when you say that. Don't be a hypocrite, Tucker, because you watch porn. Yeah, but dude, you that doesn't change the fact that she, as a matter of fact, is a porn star. Now, you could say, oh, there are other labels you could put on her. That's true, and I'm sure Tucker is trying to be dismissive when he says that. Um, but I also think it's true that you're a creepy porn lawyer. That's what you are. And you somehow managed to elbow your way in the room, and you got on, uh, TV, and now you're in the public eye, and now you're, you know, uh, basically flirting with a presidential run. You're outright saying it, actually. And the mainstream media is giving you enough attention where, um, you know, you're basking in it, and they're a bunch of idiots in the mainstream media, so they run right along with you. And, um, it basically makes me want to absolutely kill myself, because... <laughs> Because this is what's happening in this country, is that it is true. Creepy porn lawyer boy uh, went on white nationalism tonight with Tucker Carlson. <laughs> and they yell at each other incoherently and start screaming about watching porn. Oh, God, it's so bad. So uh, let's break some of that stuff down. To the uh, Putin part. Avenatti said, well... <clears throat> the Russian election meddling is the same as if Vladimir Putin put 100,000 troops on our border. Yeah, no. No, it's not. It's not even close. And uh, this is a point where Tucker's correct. If you say that, you don't even understand uh, the damage that your rhetoric has, and you don't even understand the implications of that position. Because that means that uh, what you're calling for is war with Russia. And when Tucker even points out, hey, there's a whole new round of sanctions against Russia, do you support that? Uh, what does Avenatti say? That's not enough. So then what is enough, Michael? What is enough? See, this is this is what, what you get when you have just vapid anti-Trump grifters getting all this media attention. 
He's not going to put front and center the things that should be put front and center. He's not going to focus on fucking a living wage and ending the wars and uh, a new New Deal and legalizing marijuana and Medicare for all and getting uh, money out of politics. He doesn't, because he doesn't know this shit. All he cares about is getting his narcissistic ass in the spotlight. And so he'll do that by any means necessary. And what does he do? He's in front of a crowd and he gives them what he thinks they want to hear. V Putin is bad. Russia's bad. It's like they put it. It's like they attacked us. There were people calling this a fucking Pearl Harbor because there were a dozen Twitter trolls that were doing memes during the election that were from Russia. I, I mean... It would just be hilarious if it wasn't also dangerous what these guys are calling for. And, uh, this is... This is what we have to look forward to in the 2020 election. And by the way, there is a litany of odious figures who are horrendous who want to run. Now we have John Kerry who wants to run. Michael Bloomberg wants to run. This fucking jackass wants to run. And it's just, it's, it's tiresome and it's sad. And at a time when we need a robust, intelligent resistance more than ever, the resistance is getting watered down. It's anything but robust and it's anything but intelligent. <laughs> it's people who would actually help Trump. A guy like Avenatti running, that fucking helps Trump. It really does. So what we're going to see is in 2020, Dems are going to try to out right wing each other on the issue of Russia. And they'll frame it as if the further right wing you go on Russia, the more left wing you are. You understand what I just said? Let that sink in. Let that marinate. Let that mover is, you know, move around in your head a little bit. The more right wing Dems are on Russia, sanctions aren't enough. It's like they put 100,000 troops on the border. We need to respond with the full force of the law. Whoever goes furthest right wing on Russia, they will think like, I just nailed it and I'm the furthest left wing. And this is what's happening to the discourse. It's degrading. And let me be clear, none of this is to give Tucker Carlson credit, because Tucker Carlson just wanted the eyeballs, which is why he invited this jackass on the show. Dude, listen. If you really thought he's as irrelevant as you act like he is, I mean, you call him creepy porn lawyer, which is accurate, by the way, but if you really thought he was that irrelevant, why are you inviting him on the show? Why are you inviting him on the show? You do one segment a week, just ripping him to no end and saying he's a fucking idiot who shouldn't even be getting... Uh, onto these mainstream media shows, but you don't, you invite him on, because like you said, you want to take him seriously, but you shouldn't want to take him seriously, and w we end up getting a scream fest, where at the end of it, Avenatti's asking about Tucker Carlson's porn viewing habits. See, this is what you get. This is what you get when you reward bad behavior and pretend like these are real political players. This is not a real political player. <laughs>